<clears throat> Yo, what's going on, Sexy Sam Lender Squad? How are you guys doing? I am repping my Into the AM clothes again. Um, you can clearly see some gains coming in, man. I got some gains. I got some chest gains. Got some chest gains, got some shoulder gains, got some arm gains coming in, you know, like, oh, baby, oh, oh, hit him. I got gains coming in, so it's nice. Um, We're doing Wisdom Wednesday again. Hold on, just take a sip of my coffee. It's pretty good. It's a little bit more bitter than I like because I didn't put enough sugar in it, but um, still pretty good. So, first piece of wisdom Wednesday. Hebo is open. Fenrir is banned. I banned Fenrir hoping that he would ban Hebo, and then he didn't, which means Hebo has no counters at the moment. It's a me. Now, in my opinion, one of the best gods to play against Hebo, which he is not, but one of the best gods to play against Hebo, if Fenrir is not available, is Vulcan because your three can actually outrange his three. So you have, you know, you can you can win some poke battles here and there. So yeah, so yeah. Let's go ahead. Um, there's a couple of different starts you can do. There's a couple of um, starts you can do with the mages. And some of those starts include, but are not limited to, uh, Bancrofts. You know, tier 2 Bancrofts with one of each pot, which is what I've opted for. Um, you can actually go tier 2 Chronos Pendant with one of each pot, which is what most people opt for right now, I think. And then, if you feel like your early game is lacking, you can go for the Mage's Blessing or Attacker's Blessing start with Tier 1 Bancrofts or Tier 1 Boots or whatever, really. Um, and yeah. I'm not going to be picking that up, but I did want to clear it. So. I got Aegis, by the way, because... Um, I got Aegis because I don't want Kukulin to ult me and completely frag me. That would really suck. He actually only did one buff and I still got to lane in time. Pretty great for me. He's going to transform here soon. I actually want to auto trade here. And then when you see him start to transform, you back off. Um, and the reason you want to try to force his transform early is so he de-transforms early as well. I don't know really what he's doing there because he shouldn't be fighting like that. It will de-transform here. And we're just going to clear wave. I do have alt for his blue. Let's see if maybe he's doing it. He was doing it. Unfortunately. I wasn't able to steal it, but that's alright. <clears throat> In fact, I probably just helped him clear. Oh, this is a mistake, bro. Oh, maybe not. Damn. That, uh... That bracer was a good play. I did not think that his bracer was going to be able to, to help him live through that. I genuinely thought he was going to die there, but... Um... He does a lot more damage than I thought, man. Damn, he hit me with a lot of shit. Well, either way, it's all right. We're just chilling. It's gonna hurt. 150. Now, something worth noting. Um, a lot of people don't know this about Kukulin, but his one actually has 50% built-in anti-heal. 50% built-in anti-heal. So. You pretty much never ever... Oh, he's transforming. You 
Unfortunate. Nice. So I uh, I held my I held my ward for a minute there because I wanted to see if I could use it to get a kill later on in the game, and it turns out I actually was able to, which was pretty nice. Also, what I did there, um, uh, damn, I really didn't think he would be able to reach that. I'm fine though, he's not gonna transform here, he can't kill me. I really didn't think he'd be able to reach that in time though, with only tier one, two boots. Unfortunate, man, unfortunate. But what I did there with my three was, I threw my three, like I warded right here, right? I threw my three to cut off that path and then I won here. So there was no way that he was going to be able to go anywhere. Oh no, oh bitch. Okay. He was going for my red there, or for my blue there, but... Oh, transform boy. He wants to be aggressive because he's transforming, so I'm going to back out. I'm actually just going to alt this wave and go do speed buff. Oh, I missed. Or did I miss? I didn't miss. I just missed the back two. Oh, he wants his blue. I want to see if I can steal that. Damn. So close. You actually backing or are you fake backing? He actually backed. Okay. Place this here. But keep on running because with my one and my three, we're able to clear and still get distance towards the speed buff to efficiently farm. And then I want to throw the guy away from me with my meatball so that I don't take as much damage. It doesn't really matter with uh, when you have Bancrofts, but it's still... It's good practice to do. He jumps. He transforms here, but I'm not too scared. Alright, let's go back. He's a tanky boy. It doesn't scare me at all. Alright, got the red buff down. I have blue buff, so I can actually still stay. I don't think he can kill me because I have Aegis and he has no ult. Okay. Let's go back. There's nothing up on the map for him to farm right now. Which means there's nothing up on the map for me to lose by backing. And you should always kind of think about that when you're, when you're playing the game is if I go back here, what do I lose? What is this play? Okay. Yeah, big guy. You really think this is the play? Okay. Again, I'm gonna just knock the uh, the buff away from me with my with my three and just let my turret clear it a little bit. The reason I'm maxing my um, my meatball instead of my turret, by the way, is because I don't want my turret to just be another like because everything he does has pierce to it. Like he can hit my turret and me with the same ability, which means. That no matter what, my turret is dying pretty fast. So I want to max my three instead of my turret because my turret's just gonna die anyways. You know, what's the point? Surprised he's not transforming yet. Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. 
Alright. Alright. Um, I knew that I would win that fight really hard, so I actually saved my abilities to clear the wave faster. And I think a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people will just throw out all their abilities because they think they needed to win the fight, but you don't really. If you're winning that fight that hard, you can actually practice um, a little bit of kind of uh, like self-control and, and using your abilities because that does... A lot of people have trouble with that. He's coming for me right now. Can you hear me clearing? Um, a lot of people have trouble with that where they should get this. I'm going to get beads so that he can't knock me up. Um... But a lot of people have trouble with, like, that kind of self-control aspect of using your abilities and when to use cooldowns and stuff. A lot of times it is actually better to hold on to your cooldown and make the, make the fight get a little bit closer in order to, you know, push an objective a little bit quicker or um, save mana for later or something like that, you know? Oh my god, he's transforming! I didn't expect it, help! Don't ult! Okay, he missed. We're good. He doesn't scare me anymore. Ah, mm. uh, that was stupid. I should have, uh... My archer will kill that thing. I should have, um, waited until his anti-heal was over. Did he get it? Ow. I want to keep up the pressure here. He's going to probably jump on wave. Damn, I knew exactly what he was going to do. I just didn't time it well enough. He is transformed. My dash root. Dash. Okay. And now we kite him out. Uh, no mana. Oh, man. dead he's not dead <sighs> oh that is so unfortunate actually I think I am gonna I wasn't gonna go divine ruin I was gonna just go shard but I think um, I think going divine is pretty good here because of the fact that uh, Sorry, I'm just trying to listen for Bull Demon if he was doing it or something. But I think that going Divine here is actually pretty good because of the fact that he's Kukulin and he has Bracer. And he has Warrior's Blessing and he has Gladiator Shield. Not to mention, again, he's Kukulin. So um, he gets a lot of just like base HP 5 that I want that Divine to really lower a little. He's ulting. Well time knockup though. Beads that, and I just keep the fight going because I can. Perfect. So that fight, I really just utilized my relics to where when he rooted me, I didn't allow him to get close. You know, when he rooted me, I just, I beads the root as fast as I could and I tried to keep my distance. And that's another thing is, you know when I was talking earlier about using your abilities and holding your abilities and stuff? You'll notice, I'm um, sorry, that I did do that there actually. And that I, I held my knock up until I knew I could almost confirm it. All right, so that time I missed my one. He has no jump. Put it close to him. Oh, that was perfect. Oh, nice. Okay. So basically, 
I knew he had no jump. That's why I said put it close to him when I ulted. Um, he had no jump. So if I put it in front of him, like just slightly in front of him, he has to double back or die, right? Those are the only two options he has because the alt would kill him. So he, he had to double back towards me. So I put it in front of him and I placed my turret behind him. So he either starts taking damage from the alt or taking damage from the turret. In this case, he chose the turret, which was the right decision because I haven't been leveling it. Um, but I was still able to confirm it because he had no jump. You know, he, he, he doesn't have that much cooldown reduction. He only has 20%. Um, so I'm really, really able to kind of like min-max what I can do to him. That is unfortunate. It's going to hurt. I knew he was going to Aegis, or I knew he was going to ult. So basically, when you, um... When Kukulin ults, but doesn't actually hit anyone... Okay, he's dead. Unless I suck. Hold on. So when Kukulin ults, but doesn't actually do damage to anyone, it doesn't increase his rage meter. Okay. I guess um, he probably wasn't paying attention to how low his tower was. Or what items I had, because I'm, I'm doing a lot more damage now than I was before. I won't be able to kill Titan here, because he spawns. Well, actually, can I? Yeah, I can. Okay. Well, um, there you go. I mean... So, when you're playing Vulcan, I am going to... Why is he laughing? He lost. <laughs> um, I'm going to analyze this a little bit over... Or at the like endgame screen. Dude, I, I look so good. I've lost so much weight. Well, I haven't really lost that much weight. Actually. Um, but I've just got a lot more muscle. So, like, my weight stayed the same, but I'm more muscular now. So, coward XD. Well, okay. Running all the time. Anyways, um, <clears throat> so I'm going to analyze the matchup a little bit more. Um, basically, he went full tank because that's what he thought he should do. Going glad shield, by the way, is super dumb. I don't know why he would do that instead of runic shield. In my opinion, if this was a runic shield, there's no way I won that game. But um, he went tanky because that's what he thought he should do. Again, he went warrior tabai. I tell everyone, never buy warrior tabai. It's a shit item. Just go attack speed boots, it's better. Um, and then he went anti-heal, which I don't know, because if, if he was going to go beat stick here, this should have been a toxic blade, you know? Um, so his build was kind of all over the place and really bad. But just in general, I was able to beat him by using my movement as an advantage, because he jumped in on me to engage almost every time, right? So when he jumps in, I meatball my feet and then backfire out. So he gets knocked backwards and I get more distance again. So we have to, we're sitting at like this distance instead of this distance. And instead of being able to auto trade, I can auto him and use my one. So it was really just about using my, um, using my abilities that give me movement as an advantage, as well as really rushing that cooldown that was able to win me the game. And, um, not only that, but my movement and my spatial awareness with Vulcan, which is like, how far are you going to alt? How far does that alt um, lower the damage of it? So like if I full alt versus if I half alt, because a lot of people don't know this, but let me show you actually. On Vulcan, the damage you do with your alt is determined by how far you shoot that bitch. If it's right at your feet, it only does 60% of its damage right here. And if you yeet that motherfucker, it does its full damage. So it really does depend on that. But um, I used my spatial awareness a couple of times. Like, again, with, with the alt where I kind of cut his, his path off and he had to run back towards me and I got the kill. And with the ward over the wall where I meatballed one path and then backfired the other path. Um, I kind of just, I put him in a lot of situations where he had no chance to get away because um, with a mage, with abilities like this, like Poseidon and Vulcan, and Scylla and stuff like that, uh, Thoth even, you're not even so much supposed to use your abilities straight for damage. 
as you are for control. You know, Vulcan and uh, Thoth and, you know, Poseidon, they're control mages as much as they are burst mages, you know. So um, try to utilize that. Try to utilize your positioning and your abilities a little bit more than what you normally would. And I hope that this Wednesday, Wisdom Wednesday, helped you guys. If it did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, peace.